Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the MOOC course on Interactomics. In our previous lecture, we discussed various types of cell-free expression based protein microarrays. We spoke about protein in situ arrays, halo tag arrays, DNA array to protein arrays, multiple spotting techniques as well as nucleic acid programmable protein arrays or NAPA. Although each one of these techniques offered several unique advantages, but NAPA approach has proved to overcome many practical limitations and it is being applied to generate high density arrays. In today's lecture, we will talk about generating protein microarrays using NAPA chemistry. As you can see in the figure, you have a microarray slide and each feature highlighted in the expanded view contain four features. One of this is the cDNA containing GST tag. Then you have bovine serum albumin BSA protein, capture antibody such as anti-GST and BS3 cross-linker. In the NAPA approach, plasmids encoding the target protein are fused with an affinity tag and those are fixed to the array surface. The array surface is activated by addition of cell-free expression system. The cell-free expression system have eased the path of fabricating arrays and have been widely commercialized from different manufacturers such as Promega, Thermo Fisher, New England Biolabs, Takara Clone Tech, etc. The cell extracts of weed germ cells, rabbit reticulocyte lysate. E. coli cells and insect cells have shown great promise for in vitro in translating proteins from the template DNA. Rapid reticulocyte lysate or HeLa cell lysates are particularly preferred for eukaryotic mammalian protein expression. HeLa cell lysates have shown to less variability from batch to batch as compared to rabbit reticulocyte lysates. This is because the cell lysate comes from an established cell line which is likely to be more consistent as compared to coming from the animal model. And therefore, the HeLa cell lysate protein expression provides very regular protein expression performance and less variability from batches. The target proteins are expressed and immobilized in situ and they are detected by a universal anti-tag antibody in NAPA chemistry. In this slide, the GST tag and anti-GST antibody are shown. So, if you have a GST tag, you can use an anti-GST antibody. If you have flag tag, you can use anti-flag antibody. If you have MIG tag, you can use anti-MIG antibody. These universal tag strategies can work out depending on the tag you use as well as the corresponding antibody pair. Based on the overview of different types of protein microarray platforms and cell free expression based systems from our previous lecture, we will now focus on how to make protein microarrays by using NAPA approach. We will go through with a step wise workflow of monitoring various parameters. This includes steps like cloning and plasmid preparation which will be discussed in this lecture as well as amino acid silane coating of the glass slide, printing parameters which will be discussed in next lecture. In the NAPA approach, one need to ensure that DNA printing is of good quality as well as protein expression is good. So, that 
all the quality control checks are well established. So, what are the requirements to assemble protein arrays? In today's lecture, we will discuss about making protein arrays which is similar for most of the cell free expression based protein microarrays. This workflow can be largely applied for all types of protein microarray platforms, but it will be essentially in the context to the NAPA. First of all, we need a repository of the expression ready clones which should be in flexible cloning system. In the previous lecture, we have talked about recombinational cloning which provides very high quality master clones. Now, those master clones can be easily transferred by sub cloning them in a different type of expression system. One must thereafter establish a pipeline for very quick verification of DNA constructs and its printing on the chip surface. So, you need a robust printing chemistry since you are aiming for high throughput experiments with thousands of features to be printed on these arrays. High throughput capability is thus required, so as the automation at every step. We will therefore, first talk about the array design and the experimental planning required for performing these arrays. So, unlike other proteomic techniques, where one starts with unknown things to identify the protein by using mass spectrometry. In protein microarray, scientists are already aware what type of contents are printed on the chip surface to start with and those contents have to be very well planned along with control features. If you have a specific objective in mind, for example, you want to study protein protein interactions, you need to have some good positive controls for the protein interactors as well as some negative controls to rule out the false positives. You want to identify some biomarkers for example, you are looking for serum screening. You need to have some good control spots such as human IgG or mouse IgG. Thus, a lot of thought process goes in designing the experiments for the microarrays as opposed to what one does in other type of proteomic technologies. What type of surface one need to select, what printing chemistry one need to use are different questions which are always in mind of microarray researchers. Since we are talking about the self free expression based system, you need DNA to start with. So, how to express those and construct those clones are other considerations. Once you have done the culturing of clones, now you need to concentrate on DNA preparation. Almost all the molecular biology laboratories perform these experiments on routine basis and it is very straightforward to do the DNA extraction. However, when we talk about doing the experiments in high throughput, then it poses several challenges because quality of all your features have to be good. So, various type of quality controls and various observations one need to keep in mind for doing the even simple experiments like DNA purification and concentration. Once your DNA is prepared, then you need to mix it with proper printing mix. In this case, we are talking about NAPA arrays. So, we need to have those components which are required to make the protein by cDNA. To ensure the printing quality is good and various type of quality control checks are required. So, to overview the experimental planning, one must design the arrays, establish the features to be printed on the array surface. One must design these experiments thoughtfully, establish the features which are going to be printed on these arrays, what type of chemistry needs to be selected, how to purify the DNA. And once you have the slide functionally ready along with the DNA in the printing mix, then all you need to do print those in large number of slides for various applications.
So, let us start with the array design first. As I mentioned lot of thought process goes into designing these experiments. One need to perform a thorough literature review, one need to look at the experimental objective carefully even before moving forward for any type of micro array printing. So, design the experiment type and designate an appropriate protein test set. Once your test set works, one can actually expand it for large number of features. No fit NAPA chemistry utilized to assay being executed. Decide what type of array density you are planning to use and how you are going to map that. Then define the robotic parameters for these experiments. All these steps have to be well planned in advance. For example, I have shown you few insets here. The very top panel in these slides show different genes which you would like to make on the 96 well plate while doing DNA prepping. First of all, you have clones and now you want to do the DNA prepping. You know in each well, for example, in A1 you know what gene it would contain, it has BCL2 gene. Then H12 has been left blank, G12 has a defined gene. Similarly, all the wells have a defined gene. On the right hand side, I have shown you the array map, which shows a very high density map. How different type of features can be printed on the chip? All these things have to be designed prior to the experiment. Now, each spot needs to be printed in duplicate. Also, you need to ensure that control features are spread throughout the array surface. For example, if you see the bottom panel, ones which are highlighted in red color are showing GST protein, green are the known spots. So, these spots are printed in duplicates and they are spread on the array surface, not adjacent to each other, so that you can look up the duplicate results and ensure that there is no spillage issues or spreading on the neighboring spots. This is expanded view here of a 6 by 6 spots per block. These are small blocks and obviously on the bigger array you have several features. The yellow ones show the genes and green one shows the control features. So, for example, here one can use four different type of control features, no spot, no DNA control, a mouse IgG, a known gene, GST protein, human IgG etcetera. It all depends on the objective of your experiment and then suitable controls can be incorporated in the array map. First of all, one need to do a bioinformatics selection of all the target cDNAs. If you are focusing on a particular cancer or a particular disease, obviously you have to think about all those genes which are relevant for that disease as well as different type of control features which could be a marker for that given disease. So, now you need genes of interest to print. So, let us talk about cloning and plasmid preparation. Earlier we talked about recombinational cloning. Now, researchers have started creating cDNA repositories using recombinational cloning, which allows for the rapid transfer of DNA fragments from one vector to another in frame and without any mutation. These clones are collected in repositories such as one at Arizona University. MCG clones and there are several other commercial repositories as well. Once you have selected the gene of interest, now you need to design the primers and use PCR to amplify those clones. Gel purify the right size band and then move them 
in the entry construct. You need to then transform them in E coli, select the right transformant colony, then you would like to use those colonies in the long term by making a stock in glycerol stock and use it for the future reference. DNA preparation process is very similar to what everybody performs in a very routine molecular biology lab. Only difference here is that things have to be much more automated, the steps have to be much more fast and in high throughput manner. If you are performing these plasmid preps in tubes, then you have to really do it many times which will increase the irreproducibility and manual artifacts. So, all these steps are preferably performed by using automated liquid handling system. It is difficult to achieve high density, so all these steps need to be automated. An image here shows the type of arrays and platforms which can be used for performing these experiments. In this manner, you can do the prepping in 96 well plate format and lysate can be loaded directly onto the DNA binding plates by using these type of robots. Let me explain you the cloning as well as plasmid preparation in high throughput manner by showing this animation. Automated clone storage system. In order to program the NAPA arrays, first of all we will require access to the cloned cDNAs representing the target proteins. The cDNA clones are stored in the repositories in minus 80 degrees. All the genes should be uh, fully sequenced. The full length open reading frames captured into a recombination based cloning system. Genes of interest can be easily transferred into any expression vector by simply adding the appropriate recombinational enzymes. This process is highly efficient and enables the transfer of many genes simultaneously into different expression vectors in a single strip in frame and without mutations. By using a recombinational cloning approach, the coding sequences can be transferred into any expression vector in simple overnight reaction. After the cloning is done, perform the spotting of the glycerol stock on the LB agar plate. So, transfer the bacteria from the glycerol stocks to an LB agar plate that contains appropriate antibiotic. You can use that either using multi channel pipettes or using liquid handling systems. It is preferred to do this in 96 well plate format, so that you can avoid any mislabeling of the samples. So, allow the bacteria to grow overnight at 37 degrees before inoculating that into the liquid medium. So, as shown here, you can use a multi channel pipetter or you can also use the liquid handling system. So, first of all, you need to prepare the culture blocks and add the liquid broth in 96 well plate format. You need to ensure that you have added the antibiotic solution in each well. Once culture blocks are ready, then inoculate the liquid culture from the bacteria grown on the agar plates. Similarly, you can fill all the wells or then cover the deep well block with a permeable seal. Mm -hmm. 
ensure that sealing is proper and then incubate the cultures on a shaker. You can grow the culture at 37 degrees at 300 rpm, ensure that shaking is uniform. After these blocks have completely grown the bacteria, for the overnight or 10 to 12 hours of incubation, then we need to pellet down these blocks. So, you can centrifuge these blocks for 15 minutes at 2000 to 2500 rpm. While doing centrifugation, ensure that centrifuge is balanced. So, once the centrifugation is complete, then the bacterial pellet will be in the well and then you need to remove the supernatant. So, remove the supernatant from these bacterial cultures. discard the tips and once you have completed that for all the wells, then you are ready to perform the DNA plasmid isolation. So, remember your basic molecular biology and you need to prepare the solution 1, 2 and 3 for doing the plasmid preparation. So, add 200 microliter of solution 1, which is resuspension buffer that contains 50 millimolar of tris at pH 8, 10 millimolar of EDTA and 0.1 mg per ml of ribonuclease. So, you need to add the resuspension buffer around 200 microliter to each well. So, remember in the last step we had made the bacterial pellet from those culture blocks and now you can add this 200 microliter of resuspension buffer in each well. After adding the solution then you can close the plate by adding a cover slip. Once the seal is placed, then you need to vortex it. One can also do it by pipetting up and down or doing the vortexing few times. In similar way, add 200 microliter of solution 2 to each well. Solution 2 contains 0.2 normal NaOH and 1 percent of sodium lodosyl sulphate. This is a lysis solution. After adding this solution, again you need to repeat the same process of adding 200 microliter of solution 2 to each well, seal the plate and then invert the plate few times. Once solution 2 is added, make sure that you invert the plate few times. Now, add 200 microliter of solution 3 
to each well similar to what we have seen earlier. The solution 3 is the neutralization solution which contains 3 molar of potassium acetate at pH 5.5. Now, centrifuge the block at maximum speed for 20 minutes at the room temperature. Once centrifugation is complete, then you need to discard these supernatant by dumping the block over a waste container. So, with this we have now learnt how to perform plasma preparation for printing on NAPARIs. This would serve as the primary template for protein production. In the next lecture, we will learn further as to how to fabricate the surface of these chips, print arrays and express pure proteins for the functional protein assays. Thank you.